Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. Well, I don't know about you folks, but I think it's about time we clean up this wiring mess under my hood. So let's check out the Oxbeam AR820 uh, switch panel and distribution block. That's what's coming up next on Elkara Ham Radio. <laughs> Well, folks, as we can see, it was past time to uh, do something about the wiring in my uh, in my hood compartment with the battery. Uh, you know, once you've installed just a couple of accessories, uh, your wiring may start to look uh, kind of like mine did, <laughs> which is not uh, not great. Uh, just uh, you know, wires going everywhere, and part of what happens is uh, when we kind of use factory wiring harnesses and off-the-shelf wiring harnesses uh, they're not custom length and uh, we uh, we use them and then of course there's in many cases some slack left over sometimes a lot of slack left over and, uh, and then you just sort of wad it up and throw it in the corner um, but uh, that's not really a great thing to do and especially over time when as we saw here um, there was a lot of cable that I could get rid of uh, this is the first batch of uh, of cable that I basically got rid of from radios and lights and different things that I had added to the truck. Uh, as you'll see, I ended up with a second batch of cables when I added a few more lights. Uh, and so, again, with the uh, factory harnesses being um, uh, plenty long, uh, you know, that's a good thing. You really don't want to be short, uh, but leaving all that left over is not great either. So... I finally took the time uh, here recently to get the Oxbeam AR820 eight position switch panel and the double sided power distribution box. It comes with a 60 amp circuit breaker as we see here and uh, decided to clean things up and cut the cables and make them a much more appropriate and custom length. Hook everything to the battery and, uh, and just clean things up and ultimately make things safer uh, and hopefully more efficient uh, on top of that. So there you see a um, little jumper cable for the fuse box uh, for the power to the uh, the panel that goes inside your cabin. So um, one of the nice things about going with a setup like this, and there's a couple of main options in the marketplace. Uh, this is a the slightly cheaper version uh, of, of what's out there. There's uh, at least one or two other options. They're, they're all pretty good from what I've heard. Uh, but they're not terribly cheap, and although this is uh, the lesser expensive, one of the, the lesser expensive options, maybe it's mid-range, upper mid-range overall, um, you can spend even quite a bit more money than this. But again, eventually, I got to the point where I was like, well, maybe it is time <laughs> to spend a little money and, uh, and make things look better and, and clean things up. Uh, so I got some ferrules here in a ferrule crimper. Um, I've never really used these before. Uh, I've seen them, but they allow you to, to put a really nice clean finished in on a cable to make connections, especially into certain kinds of kind of fuse boxes and things. And uh, as you'll see with the uh, power distribution uh, block that goes uh, in the engine bay there, with the aux beam, uh, it's got those uh, sort of those side ports, and this is going to work really well to make very safe, neat, clean connections for that box. So uh, I purchased the little the purchased little tool in the uh, the ferrules, a uh, little kit, uh, not terribly expensive, uh, and something I'll use occasionally to uh, to do this kind of work. So here you can see I've I've cleaned up all the connections off the battery, all the spider web, and everything is gone. Uh, and then we just connect the main distribution uh, block from the aux beam to your battery. So you'll have one more uh, fairly heavy duty connection. You see the red and the black uh, connections there. Uh, and of course, the uh, circuit breaker goes in line with the, uh, the positive side of things. And then you've got uh, a cable that's going to run into the cabin that will uh, feed and, and get the input from this little switch panel right here, this nice aluminum uh, case switch panel that goes inside and there's some stickers as we'll see later so you can kind of customize what each one of the buttons does and so depending on where you plug into the uh, distribution panel there uh, is uh, which button will activate things 
So you've got that resettable 60 amp fuse. The system as a whole can handle 60 amps. Uh, and there's an example of one of the ferrules crimped on. And then you can put that into the screw terminals. And um, I think it just works better than just having some raw wire uh, jammed into those screw terminals to go with the ferrule. So it's a little bit of extra work. Again, the kit wasn't terribly expensive. Uh, uh, 10 or 15 bucks, I think, 20. It, it wasn't that much. And it's something I'll use over and over again. So here I've got it hooked up. Uh, you can see there's power coming in. Just doing some check here. Uh, checking one of the positions that I do have plugged in for uh, some of my lights on the front of the truck. And we saw the red light come on to indicate that position. And sure enough, uh, the lights are on. <laughs> so it's always a good thing when uh, when your stuff works after you finish working on it. Uh, so there's the beginning of, of some of the wires, again, that were coming out and getting shortened and stuff. I didn't need those relays because the switch distribution panel has relays. It has the fuses. It's all built in. So it really helps you clean up your cabling and uh, and have a safer, uh, just cleaner, neater install as a whole. And there's a cover that goes on this part of the distribution block as well. So again, just uh, checking some things out, making sure stuff works. Uh, you know, each step of the way is I would um, uh, shorten some cables, put on the ferrules, and plug into the distribution block. I would check everything, make sure it was working, make sure the connections I made were good, and that uh, everything came on. And there's the uh, the hood lights, the uh, the ditch lights. So, so far, so good. Uh, you know, everything worked out. And in the end, um, everything has worked out. Um, I wasn't expecting this. Again, you can see kind of the ferrules and then cutting the... Um, the wire to, uh, to link there at the end of the ferrule. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, but I've actually already used seven <laughs> of the eight positions on this thing. Uh, part of the reason is because I do have both of my amateur radios on here. Uh, the two meter, 70 centimeter ICOM uh, ID, um, uh, IC 5100A. And then I've also got the HF radio, the uh, uh, Yaesu uh, 891. Uh, those could go straight to the battery. They were going straight to the battery, but I decided to clean everything up and get everything off the battery. Uh, so they're going through the, uh, the aux beam. And then also the previous owner of this truck had put in a, uh, uh, an amplifier for the head unit. Uh, that was going to the, uh, the battery. So you can see the one called stereo there. Uh, that's for the head unit. Uh, so those are three positions of, of things that could go back straight to the battery if I ever need more, more space. But for now, I kind of like being able to positively turn everything off when I want to and uh, don't have to worry about any of those things having a, a parasitic draw or anything like that. So here we can see I can uh, turn on the radio with the appropriate switch, switch position on the uh, switch panel inside the, the, t the truck there uh, and um, the first position uh, I've got for the HF or the UHF VHF radio because I use it the most and then the second one is the HF radio. Uh, don't have custom labels for these would have been kind of nice uh, there's sort of a way to do custom labels that I'm not sure they, they look really that great so I just stuck with somewhat generic labels but uh, it'll work out just fine uh, I can run the radios easily enough uh, I can also power again some of the lights and uh, the uh, little amplifier for the head unit as well and I've still got one position left so uh, I also got this uh, this little uh, panel here uh, that uh, the aux beam is sitting in. I got that off Etsy. Uh, it's a custom 3D printed panel for third gen Tacomas to hold the aux beam. And it makes a really nice clean install. And then you've still got your uh, factory uh, buttons and things down below that. Uh, so it turned out really nice. Everything looks much better. And that's pretty much it. We'll wrap this one up, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio 73.